Hello, Mr. Wright here. Wanted to explain how to get started on the clarinet. You want to make sure the case, the label is facing straight up on the case so that when you open the case, it doesn't spill out. But you open that up. And the first thing I'm going to do is take the reed. Now, it may be in a little wrapper, but you take that wrapper off. You can throw that apart away. But this next little part right here, this little plastic case right there, very, very important. We're going to store our reed back in that after we finish. And it's got a flat side to it, and it's got a part that's, that's angled down. And uh, we're going to, the part that's cut away on the bamboo reed here, we're going to put it towards that angle side in a second. But you'll just carefully take it out and set this reed case that you're going to keep back in your case. And then we're going to take this reed and we're going to soak it. I'm, I like to soak mine in some water. You may not be able to do this in class. Uh, something your banner actually just put it in your mouth let it soak there but at home it's good to just let it soak in some water and i like to soak it on both sides but i'm just going to let it soak there for just a minute while we put the clarinet together and to put the clarinet together we're going to take the bell section first like that and then we're going to take this large section that's got this kind of a blank section it's got this large cork right here and notice it's got these big two keys right there and i'm just going to grab it with my fingers right there so i'm not mashing any keys as i hold on to it so it's kind of a blank side over here. I'm going to just kind of take it and I'm going to use it and press this um, bell section onto there and you want to make sure that there's a little bit of cork grease on there first because sometimes these corks are really dry and if you don't, if it is kind of dry, you want to take your cork grease out of your case and just put just a little bit on there onto these little corks. Rub it on there with your fingers then get some tissue and clean off your fingers and then put that back in the case and you also want to take care of the other corks. They're also on the other joints of the clarinet. I'm gonna put that, mine's already good to go. I'm gonna put that together and you'll push this in completely. Then this next section, um, that's got this mechanism all through here. Um, you'll notice there's a little piece right there, a little uh, joining rod right there. It's a little plate type of little arm that sits over this one right here. So we're gonna join these together and I'm gonna put this piece over on top of this one. And I'm just gonna carefully Place it to where it slides right over that and make them nice and even. See these two guys right there? They're, they're even. Let me see if you can see it. Eh, not too good a lighting right there, but they're, they're, they're lined up there and that's what you want. And then we're gonna take the barrel joint right here. It's just a little piece like that. Very simple little piece. Slide it on there. And you don't, you can push it down most of the way, but I like to leave it uh, so that my instrument's not too sharp sounding. Uh, I'll just leave it like I could stick my fingernail in between there that kind of a distance in there. And then you take your mouthpiece. Of course, ho hopefully your uh, cork is all greased up and everything. And like I said, not too much of it, just a little bit. And I'm using my thigh to kind of build it. And we've noticed we've built it from the bottom all the way to the top. And I'll use my thigh to press down on it. You don't want to mash it inside your case or anywhere else. I just use your left thigh or right thigh and press down. And when I put the mouthpiece on, I have lined it up with this flat part of the mouthpiece to where it's in line with this register key right here to where they're right in line. And then we're gonna take the ligature. Now yours may be a silver metal one, but uh, mine's black, but you're, on your silver metal one, when you slide it over the mouthpiece uh, in a little bit, the screws will be facing towards you with the screws pointing out to the right. So if, if uh, and make sure, and it'll also be from like, a, the, the top part will be thinner than the bottom part. The bottom part will be a little bit wider to fit the contour of this mouthpiece because it kind of goes out as it gets down toward the bottom. So now I'm gonna take the reed. Before I put that ligature on, I'm gonna wipe off just a little bit of excess water. And then I'm gonna lay this reed on top of the table of the mouthpiece. It's the flat part of the mouthpiece. And I'm gonna lay it on there to where it looks uh, sort of like that, okay? The water's causing it to kind of stick on there. And I want about a, a pencil thin line of the black mouthpiece over the reed like that. I don't know if you could see that or not, but just, just a little bit of mouthpiece over that reed. And then I'm gonna take my ligature and just slide it carefully without chipping the top of the mouth, the reed. And I'm gonna slide it on top of it. It may move my, my reed just a little bit. I'm gonna just readjust that and get it just right. And I wanna show you something about where I put the ligature, because it's really important. I'm gonna tighten it down. And you'll notice I put my hand so you can maybe see, I've got it lined back up uh, to where there's just a little bit of the mouthpiece showing above that reed. And notice that this ligature is below 
See where the bamboo is uh, carved? There's like the bark of the bamboo, and then it's, they start to shave it from right there on up. And what we want to do is have this ligature to where it's below that line, below that, that little curve piece right there. And then, um, so your, your clarinet is together. And to get a good sound, though, first of all, we're going to talk about our embouchure. So I'm going to take just the barrel joint and the mouthpiece off, and I'm going to hold it in my hands like this, and I'm going to take, I'm going to put the mouthpiece in my mouth with my two top teeth about right here. And you'll say, how much mouthpiece do I put in? Well, if you put like a piece of paper between the reed and the mouthpiece, uh, and it would stop about right there, that's about how much you would put into your mouth. And that's where your lips would fall. So uh, but I'm gonna put my two top teeth right about here on the mouthpiece. And my bottom lip, I'm just gonna take it and roll it under just enough to cover the bottom teeth. Not a whole lot, because if you do a whole lot, then it'll, it'll mute and it'll keep this reed from vibrating. So you want just a very, you want to be uh, open and ready to vibrate from this point on because that's what makes our sound. So I'm gonna roll my bottom lip under just a little bit and have my mouth in a open stance and I'm gonna seal off the corners of the reed with the corners of my lips right here on my bottom lip, like that, kind of a uh, that uh. So I'm gonna take my top teeth, put them right there, roll my bottom lip under just a little bit, like so. Now I began each note by taking the tip of my tongue and just going ta, just very lightly, the tip of my tongue, not on the very edge of it, but right underneath right there, ta. So bottom lip rolled under just a little bit, sealing off on the sides here to put pressure on the corners. And I want to let that reed vibrate freely in the middle so we can get that rich, warm sound. And my top teeth on the mouthpiece, bottom lip under just a little. Now, if you get a sound like this, if you start moving your jaw, like dwa, 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 if you get a sound like this, you're moving your jaw. You don't want to do that. You want a very solid jaw. This is the foundation of your tone. Your jaw never moves. The only thing that will move is your tongue inside of your mouth going ta, 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 ta as it touches the reed. Now, if you have a sound like Put a little, just a little more pressure with my bottom lip against the reed to bring the pitch up. Now we'll set the barrel and mouthpiece over uh, onto the instrument again, and we're going to line up the reed and this uh, register key right here to where they're right in line with each other. And then we're going to take our right thumb, your right thumb, and set it underneath the thumb rest. And I've got a little padding on mine. But this thumb rest will come right to where your thumbnail begins. And then you take your other fingers. There's a little place right here for your first finger, place right there for your second finger, third finger, and just let the other guy just kind of rest your pinky down here. Then your left thumb, you're going to set it over this little key that's open, this little hole in the back. I'll get a little closer so you can see that. I'm just going to set it at this angle so I can rock my thumb up and hit that register key. This is the, the, the long register key right there. Just rock that up if I need to. And then on the other side, there's a little hole right here. I'm going to put my first finger here, second finger there. You see that little hole right there? Put my third finger right there. And you want to wiggle your fingers around, kind of get nice and comfortable to where you can feel the cushiony part of your finger sealing off. Like you could mash real hard. And then you should be able to see the little rings that are left by your, the pressure. You know, you, so you want to make sure you can feel that. That's, that's home base. That's where you're going to be operating. And when you lift up your fingers later on, you're not going to lift them up real high. Just, just high enough to, to be able to clear the, uh, and, and let the note speak. So the first note in a lot of method books, you could start off with an open G, which is basically just no fingers down and just playing a note on the instrument. Again, I'm just taking my tongue and going ta 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 ta. Bottom lip under slightly, top teeth and mouthpiece sealing off the corners right there with the bottom of my lips right there. So the bottom lips rolled under just a little. And then what if we wanted to play a different note? Say we want to just add our thumb to play an F. So I'm just going to add my thumb. Just the thumb alone. And if I added my first finger with that thumb, 
we get an E, which is on the bottom line of the staff. And then I want to fill this other finger hole up right there, and that would give us a D, thumb. So it's thumb, one and two is a D. It's just underneath the staff on the treble clef. And if you're getting a sound like you want to keep your jaw still and you want to put a little more pressure on the bottom lip, just a little bit. Do not bring the clarinet out like this. Because, you know, and also, if you're not getting any sound at all, it may be because you're mashing that reed to where it's, it won't even vibrate, where you're mashing it into here. So remember, you've got to have it to where that much is exposed, about that much of the reed is exposed inside of your mouth. So if your lip's all bunched up under there, say you've got a big lower lip, you want just, just a little bit of lip in there so that it will be free, that reed will be free to vibrate. Go to D. Then you feel off this, seal off this last little hole right there with your left hand. Do not try to swap your hands like this because the keys won't work what you've got to do later on. You say, well, yeah, but I'm right-handed. No, no, uh, you'll have plenty to do with your right hand later on. So make sure you're playing with your left hand on top and your right hand on the bottom. Again, that's it. so it's open G, F, E, D, C. So open G. And then you could keep on putting fingers down like so, if you wanted to, like. And then you could push down this key right here to play a low F. Sorry. And I left off with just my thumb. That's an F scale, F, G, A, B flat. C, D, E, then just the F on the top. So low F to your F that's on the bottom space of the staff on the treble clef. Right? All kinds of songs you could play with that. So, and if you, a good way to test to see if your fingers are sealing off is go. If it stops playing at some point, it means your fingers are not covering the holes and you wanna make sure your finger is covering the hole because I'll show you what happens. See, I just covered it up. Etc. Okay, so just work your way down and make sure your fingers are covering up all those holes. With each finger that you put down, you're making the tubing a little bit longer, which makes the pitch go down. And then, of course, you're saying, what about that key on the back, that little register key? If you hit that later on, uh, it pops it up a 12. So. <laughs> And then I could bring, I could just hit that register key. See, I just rock my finger up. And as you go up, you need to make sure that your armature is nice and firm, because it will do this if you don't have it firm. And have a very flat sound. So you have to put a good bit of pressure on the corners of the reed there to where it's at. You still want to let it vibrate freely, but you want to have a firm embouchure as you go up with more air pressure as you go up to sustain, because you're making that, that air, the increased air speed will help that cause that reed to vibrate and give you that high pitch that you want. And you'll notice a little bit of vibrato I put on there. Uh, that basically I took my jaw and moved it just like a fraction of an inch to where, and I taper, I don't introduce the vibrato until the, toward the end of the note. I kind of taper off the note with it. And you don't stop the note with your tongue like dot, 
like that.